In 2014, the former Egyptian Minister of Antiquities and archaeologist Zahi Hawass was charged with stealing Egyptian antiquities. In the list of items that could have been stolen by the famous Egyptologist, the most unusual artifact was the ancient copper wires from the Pyramid of Cheops, also called the Great Pyramid of Giza. Indeed, it's very strange that at a time when electricity hadn't been discovered yet, there were already copper wires in this pyramid. What's even weirder is that someone decided to steal those wires, as if the archaeologist badly wanted to hide something from the public. Some historians don't believe that the Pyramid of Cheops is a tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh. There's even a theory that it was built by an even more ancient civilization. And Elon Musk once made a sensational statement on his Twitter that, in his opinion, the pyramids were actually built by aliens. At the same time, so many odd things were found in the Great Pyramid that you could probably believe anything. And the most important thing isn't even who built it, but what this building was in general. So why is the Great Pyramid far from what we initially thought? It's believed that the world's largest pyramid was built over a period of about 20 years. It took over 2 million stone blocks and various materials, which were not only mined by 20,000 workers at the construction site, but also brought by them from afar. Unlike other pyramids, it doesn't really look like a tomb. But when you go on vacation to Giza, one of the most popular cities in Egypt, the guide will assure you otherwise. At the same time, many nuances regarding the history of the Great Pyramid might raise your suspicions. For example, the fact that the pyramid used to be white. Egyptologists claim that the polished white limestone walls allowed the pyramid to literally shine with its beauty and magnificence in the sun. But the most exciting part is that the top of the structure, called the Pyramidion, was once covered with gold to beautifully reflect the sun's rays too. Thus, the pyramid was just dazzling and showed that a rich pharaoh was buried in it. Over time, the white walls of the pyramid were stolen, while marauders absconded with the gold Pyramidion. But even in our time, this tomb is striking in its size. Despite the fact that, according to the guide, the Great Pyramid isn't even fully finished. Now the structure has sunk a little, and its height reaches just over 130 meters. But before building the Eiffel Tower, the Great Pyramid was considered the highest building in the world, and at that time reached a whopping 139 meters. That's equivalent to about 70 camels standing one atop the other. And the pyramid weighs as much as 10 million camels. That's all because the builders used incredibly heavy granite. Interestingly, to the northwest of the pyramid, the Serapium of Saqqara, an ancient Egyptian temple, there are 20 huge sarcophagi with beautiful ornaments made of the same material. Each of them weighs as much as 20 elephants. Egyptologists believe that the sarcophagi served as coffins for the pharaoh's prize bulls. They were supposed to be in one of the rooms of the Great Pyramid, but apparently they simply didn't fit in the tunnels, therefore were stored in a separate room. If ordinary cattle were buried on such a grand scale, the tomb of the ruler of Egypt must look incredible. On tour, you'll be impatient to get inside the pyramid, examine the unthinkable riches buried with the pharaoh, take pictures of ancient artifacts, and try to touch the mummy while the guide turns away. But alas, you won't see any of this. The body of pharaoh Cheops hasn't been found yet. Yes, in the so-called tomb, there is a large granite box, which Egyptologists believe is the sarcophagus of the pharaoh. It's located in the room called the King's Chamber. However, this cobblestone doesn't really look like sarcophagi of other pharaohs. What can I say? It's even worse than the coffins for the bulls. When asked where the pharaoh's corpse and the burial room's relics are, Egyptologists have another universal answer. Most likely, they were stolen. At first glance, there's nothing remarkable in the so-called tomb of the pharaoh, but here you need not only to look, but to listen. The thing is that in the king's chamber, special acoustics are formed. 
It's very odd that the builders tried to achieve such an effect for a room where a corpse would just lie for centuries. But there's more to it. During the tour, you'll notice more and more bizarre nuances. For example, why do pyramids have tunnels that lead deep underground? The guide doesn't have an answer to this question because there's still unexplored areas under the pyramid. Yes, scientists claim that they found groundwater in the lower parts of the structure, but again, didn't find an explanation for why it was decided to place the pyramid above them. The next inexplicable nuance is the mysterious void found inside the tomb. It was discovered using a muon radiograph. Simply put, the pyramid was scanned to find out what is in its still unexplored parts. Egyptologists have a suggestion that this void once served as a ramp for moving blocks during construction. And when the tomb was finished, they just forgot to remove it and filled it in badly. So it turns out that, on the one hand, the Great Pyramid was built over the course of 20 years, and on the other hand, there were many flaws left in it, as if the builders did everything in haste. At the same time, according to Egyptologists, unusual effects inside the pyramid were created by accident, and some villains stole all the most important relics. Could it be that Egyptologists simply don't want the public to know something very significant about the tomb of the great pharaoh Cheops? If this pyramid was a tomb, each feature of the pyramid, which Egyptologists call an accident or a coincidence, in fact can be logically explained. Yes, the Great Pyramid of Cheops was indeed once covered with polished white limestone so that the structure took on smooth, flawless edges. But all this was rather necessary not for beauty purposes, but to reflect the sun's rays like a mirror. This would make it possible to make the inside of the pyramid perfectly isolated from sunlight. What's interesting, inside, it's made of dolomite and granite, which is a little weird. After all, granite is one of the hardest stones on Earth, and its processing takes ten times longer than the processing of limestone abundant near the pyramid. Granite was brought by boat from a quarry in Aswan, located 800 kilometers from the construction site. Indeed, you must admit it's unlikely that the Egyptians would have bothered so much with a material that's difficult to transport and process for the sake of an ordinary tomb. It's assumed that the choice of such a complex material is justified by the presence of quartz and metal crystals in it. At the same time, granite emits a small amount of radiation. And most importantly, it's a good conductor of piezoelectricity, a charge that's created using crystals. Dolomite, in its turn, increases electrical conductivity, while the gold on the pyramidion could create a conducting path for the energy directed upwards. Moreover, the Great Pyramid is geographically located above a powerful natural generator, namely underground rivers, and water is also an excellent current conductor. Yes, you've long understood what these hypotheses of independent researchers led to. There's no pharaoh's body, no artifacts or other accessories for the burial of the ruler in the Great Pyramid because it's not a tomb, but an ancient power plant. In addition, it's designed to generate and transmit wireless electricity. At the same time, the sarcophagi found in the pyramid and next to it could well be a giant ancient prototype of modern batteries. After all, the boxes are made of the same radioactive material as the internal structures of the pyramid. And these are not all the odd things that indicate that the tomb could actually be a power plant. Around the pyramid, increased electromagnetic emission was found equivalent to that occurring during an electrical storm. It's believed that its source may be in the internal chambers at the structure's base. In this case, to transmit electricity to the desired point, you only need copper wires allegedly stolen from the pyramid by Zahi Hawass. It would seem that everything fits, though there is one but. Egyptologists claim that the pyramid remained unfinished, so it's unlikely it could function as a power plant or am I wrong? English engineer Christopher Dunn noticed odd cracks in the ceilings of some of the pyramid's chambers. He suggests that an explosion could have occurred inside the building. Egyptian historians quite recently ruled out such an option. But recently, even they've begun to talk about a possible ancient cataclysm, like an earthquake that damaged the pyramid.
But you see, no damage was found in the chamber underneath the pyramid, which was supposed to be closer to the earthquake's epicenter. However, the walls in the king's chamber just seem to be convex, and you can see gaps between them and the floor. This may indicate that the walls were affected by an explosion inside the pyramid. And the so-called pharaoh's sarcophagus today has a chocolate brown color, not the original pink shade of the Aswan granite it was made from. The change in color could be caused by strong heat. It turns out that many years ago, a powerful energy impulse could have happened in the chamber, leading to an explosion. Some scientists believe that the special acoustics in the king's chamber isn't an accident either. The fact is that it can be used to transmit energy over long distances. To do this, you can use the conversion of acoustic energy into kinetic energy. Imagine an opera singer who breaks a glass with their voice. The frequency of the singer's sound waves coincides with the resonant frequency of the glass, and the acoustic energy becomes kinetic. Thus, wireless transmission of electricity could be carried out even through solid materials and over great distances. And this secret of the Great Pyramid might have been revealed by one famous physicist at the end of the 19th century. Serbian-American engineer Nikola Tesla claimed he could use the planet itself with its two poles as a gigantic electrical generator of limitless energy. In 1905, this news amused the entire scientific community of physicists. Tesla's discoveries ran counter to the knowledge of that time, but that didn't stop him at all. As the next source of endless electricity, he began to consider the ionosphere, the upper layer of the planet's atmosphere. The scientists believe that it literally sparks with electricity, which could be easily intercepted. The matter remained small to build an appropriate station and prove to everyone that he was right. Thus, he started working on Tesla's electromagnetic pyramid, which was called the Wardenclyffe Tower. His tower had an almost pyramidal shape. Nikola Tesla was greatly fascinated by the Great Pyramid of Cheops. The thing is that the pyramid is perfectly oriented to the cardinal points, deviating by only three angular minutes. For you to understand how pedantic this alignment is, it's worth mentioning the Paris Observatory. This is the most accurate structure today, oriented to the north, and it's deviated from true north by six angular minutes. This is amazing because the ancient Egyptians didn't even have compasses. But it's not the most shocking coincidence. When scientists measure the main perimeter of the pyramid and its height to scale those figures, they came up with 1 to 43,200. So what's so special about it? The fact that if we multiply the pyramid's height by this number, we get the polar radius of our planet. Most likely, such a high accuracy was also not achieved accidentally. Because of its structure, size, and location, the pyramid was able to resonate at a frequency of 8.1 Hz. And as Tesla believed, our planet did the same. After many calculations and discoveries, Tesla chose the location for the station following the laws the Great Pyramid was built by. It was guided by the ratio of the elliptical orbit of the planet and the equator. It was also important that there were undercurrents under the tower, as in the case of the Great Pyramid. He found a similar place on the east coast of Colorado Springs, where he began to build his experimental station. Like the pyramid, it used copper wires. And at the top, there was a metal coil which made it possible to create a short-range magnetic field. At the same time, electricity from the station would be transmitted not through wires, but in the form of waves. Like modern Wi-Fi. Simply put, Tesla wanted to create something like a transformer that would work with a conductive layer in the form of Earth and the ionosphere. But even if we assume that the Great Pyramid of Cheops did the same, where did it send its electricity? This question also has some assumptions. In Egypt, they found mysterious obelisks. Giant high stones, like the pyramids themselves, they were made of granite, and thanks to the quartz stones at the top, the obelisks could act as receivers. In total, the Egyptians created 28 obelisks, but for some reason, similar stones were also found in Istanbul, Rome, London, Paris, and New York. 
It turns out that back in 2600 BC, the Great Pyramid could well have functioned as a powerful wireless power plant. And its secret may have been revealed by Tesla a century before modern scientists just started talking about it. The only thing is that the tower project of the most brilliant physicist failed. In order to achieve the same electrical potential, which, according to Tesla, the Great Pyramid of Cheops had, the engineer needed to repeat its structure as accurately as possible. Unfortunately, Tesla didn't have 20,000 workers or a considerable amount of money to pay for labor and purchase the necessary materials. This, and a number of other reasons, hindered the scientists' work, and patrons got tired of waiting for the promised breakthrough in science. Therefore, sponsorship stopped and the project was closed. But what if Tesla really had succeeded? Then, our ancestors in the 19th century would have driven electric cars without any problems, and Elon Musk wouldn't have gotten rich on Tesla cars before Tesla himself. In addition, modern electric cars are far from perfect. They're expensive and time-consuming to charge, and there are only a few fast charging stations. Nowadays, scientists haven't unraveled the secret of the Tesla Tower, so they're tormented by the development of roads made of magnetized concrete so that electric vehicles might be able to be charged while driving. But so far, without success. Although Tesla wanted to make his creation public, his sponsors were worried about how to stop people from stealing energy. To do this, Tesla planned to make wave frequencies that would come in a coded sequence. In other words, the receiver had to know the code to synchronize its resonator to receive a signal, as it happens with the password on your router. In addition, Tesla claimed that with the help of his invention, people would be able to transmit voice signals, newspaper articles, and even photos over long distances. And this means that Tesla could have come close to creating a prototype of today's internet. Then, already in the 1930s, Hollywood actress Sari Maritza wouldn't have starred in black and white movies. Instead, she would go live for her wealthy fans. Whereas artist Grant Wood would probably create paintings with artificial intelligence rather than paint and canvas. If Nikola Tesla's plan had worked, we would get rid of many chargers and wires forever. But if, at the time of Tesla, people already knew about electricity, it's much more interesting to find out about how a wireless power plant could have been used in ancient Egypt. Yes, during the excavations and research of the Egyptian pyramids, archaeologists didn't find any ancient devices that might need electricity. But they found rather strange hieroglyphs found in the Hathor Temple, located in the Egyptian city of Dendera. Some see this drawing as an analog of a modern light bulb. If so, it turns out that the Egyptians used electricity as early as 2250 BC. Perhaps it was even electrical technology that helped the Egyptians build such large-scale structures without exhausting human labor. Let's assume that the destruction of the ancient Egyptian station in the form of a pyramid didn't happen. Then, we wouldn't consider the wealthiest country to be Luxembourg. While the most electricity-selling country wouldn't be Canada, the most advanced countries, along with Egypt, would be Turkey, Italy, Great Britain, and the USA. After all, ancient granite obelisks were found there, which means that wireless communications would have appeared there in the first place. Yes, this is what radio towers would look like now. Perhaps instead of Potala Palace, Leaning Tower of Pisa, and the Eiffel Tower, pyramids would now stand. After all, Italy, India, and China are rich in granite, and these countries could well afford the construction of the same power plants as in ancient Egypt. Sounds incredible. What do you think the Great Pyramid of Cheops really is? Write your thoughts in the comments. But you'd better not pay $20 to a tour guide in Giza hoping to find the correct answer.